All right, guys, so I can't be with you today, but we're going to do the next best thing, and I'm going to teach you this lesson via this video here. Today, we're going to be doing Unit 10, Bonding and Reactions, and it's Lesson 5, Types of Chemical Reactions. So start taking these notes now, pause as you need to, and then there's going to be some practice that we're going to be working on at the end. All right, so this is what a chemical reaction might look like. And what you're going to have on the left side of the equation is your reactants. So reactants are going to be your starting materials. And on the right side of the equation, you're going to have what we call the products or your ending materials. So in some cases, you'll have one or more reactants on the left side, and they'll become one or more products on the right-hand side. And when we look at the arrow that's pointing from one way to the other, it's not an equal sign. We read that as yields. So in this case, what we might say is that H2 plus O2 yields H2O. So H2 and O2 are your reactants, and H2O are your product. All right, so what we're actually going to see is that there are four types of chemical reactions, and this first one is going to be with the one that we're going to look at now. So what you can see here is that we have an element plus an element yielding a compound. So these two elements are coming together to form one compound. We call this synthesis. Synthesis is simply when things come together or get made, so it makes sense for these reactants to be combined into a single product. So again, look for an element and an element becoming one product. If we write this with variables and we write this kind of generically, we would write A plus B yields AB. So you can see element plus element coming together to make a compound. That's the key to synthesis. The second type of reaction is kind of the opposite. We're starting with a compound and we're breaking it into the two parts that make it. So here we start with H2O as the reactant, and the products are H2 and O2. We call this decomposition, and decomposition is when a reactant is split apart. So again, starting with one compound, breaking that apart into the elements that make it. If we write this generically, that's AB yields A plus B. Now, some of you math folks might be looking at this and saying, well, on this side, there's two H's because it's H2 and one oxygen, but on this side, yes, two H's, good, but that there's two oxygen on this side, but only one on that side. And that's a good thing to be noticing, and that's a future lesson where we're going to work on what's called balancing an equation. For right now, I simply want you to know, let's take these reactants, and how do we turn them into different products? We'll worry about the math and balancing them and making sure this is actually equal in a later lesson when I get back. All right, so the first two, as you saw, were pretty simple. And here's where things are going to actually start to get a little bit harder. Remember, the first two, you have two things coming together to make one. In decomposition, you have one thing splitting apart to become two. But take a look at this reaction, and you can see that a little more is going on. So what you have is an element and a compound, and that's becoming a new compound and a new element by itself. So take a look. What do you see happening here? If you are looking at zinc, coming in and switching with this hydrogen, and the hydrogen now becoming the new lonely element, that's exactly what's happening in this reaction. We call this single replacement. So in one single replacement reaction, one element switches into the compound, that other element switches out and becomes a new lonely element. So zinc now is stuck with chlorine, and hydrogen is now by itself. And when we look at this, I put this two on hydrogen Y. Exactly. It's diatomic. So anytime you have an element by itself, you need to make sure, are you asking yourself, is it diatomic or is it not? So if I give it a definition, it's one element switches places in a compound. But wait, you're saying, should zinc switch place with hydrogen or should it switch place with chlorine? Well, think about zinc's oxidation number. Zinc is a metal so it can form a positive oxidation number. And positive ions always go in the first place. Zinc will switch with hydrogen because they're both positive. If we imagine a totally different example where this isn't zinc, but instead maybe it's bromine, think about bromine or bromine's oxidation number, one minus. And that negative ion or oxidation number tells you that it would be switching with chlorine in that instance. So we have two ways of representing this. AB plus X yields XB plus A. So what that would mean is if you have a positive ion, it can switch places 
with the other positive ion, right? So think about what their oxidation numbers are. The other way of looking at it is AB plus Y yields AY plus B. And so this Y must have a negative oxidation number so that it can switch in to the second position because the first spot is always a positive ion. The second spot is always a negative ion. So if you have an element plus a compound yielding a new compound and a new lonely element, that's what's going to be a single replacement reaction. The last one, the fourth one and final one, let's get really crazy here. What we have here, really impressive here, that's AgNO3 plus HCl yields HNO3 plus Ag. Right? If we read that together, silver nitrate plus hydrochloric acid yields nitric acid and silver. Take a moment to look at it. What do you see happening here? It's kind of like single replacement, except we have a compound and a compound yielding a compound and a compound. This hydrogen is going to switch places with this silver, and this silver will take the place of this hydrogen. That's how you end up with H now with the NO3 and the silver now with the chlorine. So you have the positive ion, remember this was positive, switching with the other positive ion, and everyone's getting a new partner. So we call this double replacement. Let's take a look at which ones are positive ions. Positive, we'll switch with positive. And so you have positive and positive. And then if we do this in pink, this is a negative ion, this is a negative ion, this is negative, and this is negative. So take a look at what you have happening. What you're having is a switch of the positive ions, and everyone gets a new negative partner. So AgNO3 plus HCl becomes HNO3, so see how hydrogen has a brand new partner? And we get silver chloride, see how silver has a new partner. So double replacement is where two elements switch places in a pair of compounds. We could represent this as AB plus XY yields AY plus XB. So again, here are your negatives. And back to yellow for the positive. Click, 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 click. All right, now we got that working again. Here is a positive ion, a positive ion, a positive ion, and a positive ion. So click, click, click. All you're seeing happening is this switches with that, and then this comes into there. That's what we're calling double rate. So now it's time to do a little practice together. In a moment, you're going to be getting this worksheet here, the Types of Chemical Reactions worksheet. And as you can see, the top part I think is going to be really easy for you. Just from your notes, use those A, B, X, and Y variables to show me a little bit about what synthesis, decomposition, single replacement, and double replacement look like. In section number two, they're going to give you the whole formula, and what you're going to do is you're going to identify whether it's synthesis, decomposition, uh, single replacement, or double replacement. So I think the first part of the lesson, or the first part of this worksheet, should go really smoothly for you. Look back in your notes, rewatch this video if you need to. But for the third and fourth section, I do want to go over the first one in each of those sections on the back. So we're going to do the first one in section three together. We're going to do the first one in section four together, just so you have an idea of go what's going on. So take a look at what they're asking you. It says Ca plus O2 yields, who knows? But you do, right? That's the idea. You should just be able to look at the reactants or the product and still be able to tell what kind of reaction it is. So remember, if I see two elements as my starting material, I can then assume or infer that these two elements are going to be coming together to form one compound. And what do we call that where we have two elements becoming one compound? Right. We call that synthesis. Yeah, let's get a pen going here so it actually works for us. We're going to call it synthesis, as you guys know. And that's the first step they're asking you to do. And then we're actually going to write the products together. So I bet you're thinking Ca plus O2 should be CaO2. No 
wrong. Let's not do it. Pump the brakes on that one. Don't just start putting things together because you know if you're making a compound, what should you do? Follow your four steps. Exactly. So if I was making Ca and O2 bonded, I know that I'm using calcium and oxygen. Those are my symbols. I would then pull out their oxidation numbers. That's two plus. That's two minus. I would follow step three, which is to cross them. And that's Ca2O2. And if I could simplify, and I can here, I'm going to. And that simplified looks like CaO. So Ca plus O2 yields CaO. And so this is actually my final answer to what that reaction would look like. Ca plus O2 yields CaO. And I know math people, you're saying that doesn't work. There's two oxygens on one side and one on the other. And we're going to fix it in a later lesson. But for right now, what you need to know, every time you make a compound, follow your four steps. Don't just say Ca plus O2 yields CaO2. Make sure you go through CaO, oxidation numbers, cross them, simplify. So the correct answer is Ca plus O2 yields CaO. And this is, of course, synthesis because it's an element plus an element yielding a compound right when they come together. Let's delete this. Go ahead and jump down to section number four now on the back. And what they're going to do is kind of the reverse. In this case, they're actually going to give you the product, right? And they're not going to tell you the reactants. So when I look at this one and I see that I have one compound as my ending product, I have to think, what were the reactants? What created this one compound? And you should be able to recognize that it's probably synthesis, right? Two elements becoming one compound. So again, this is an example of synthesis. And I know that I'm ending up as B, A, and O. So I know right off the bat my starting elements were B, A, and O. When you see an element, what question are you supposed to ask yourself? Is it diatomic? Exactly. So when I see barium, I say to myself, that's an element. Is it diatomic? And I hope you said to yourself, no, of course not. So you're not going to put a two there. When I see oxygen on the other hand, let's not forget our plus sign. When I see oxygen on the other hand, I'm going to say, is it diatomic? And the answer is yes. So let's put that two there. So again, I didn't just split BA and O and say it was BA plus O. I said barium is not diatomic, so I won't put a 2, but oxygen is diatomic, so I will put a 2. So your goal on this, on the back at least, is to recognize if they give you the starting materials, what are the products going to be? And if they give you the product, what is the reactants going to be? So identify the reactions, make sure you include what type it is. Then go back and figure out either the missing reactants or the missing products, depending on which top or which bottom you're working on. And remember, the key thing in this, first, is it an element or is it a compound? If it's an element, is it diatomic? If yes, put a two. If no, leave it just the symbol of the element. If it's a compound, you must follow your four steps. So oxidation, sorry, symbols, oxidation numbers, cross them, and then simplify if you can. Tomorrow in class, what you're going to be working on is you're going to have an answer key to this homework and the previous night's homework, and then some additional practice. I believe in all of you. I think you're going to do awesome. I will see you all on Wednesday. Have a great day. Watch this as much as you need to. Bye.